Hey y'all, what's going on? This is Bud Elliott here of the Nolcast and coming to you after a hard-fought loss, 30-20 to to the Clemson Tigers on the road in Clemson. And this is the Instant Reaction Podcast. As always, we want to thank our sponsors, right? Louisiana Hot Sauce, Legendary Home Loads, and Congruity. Just a great job from all, all those folks. And unfortunately, a, a hard-fought game for FSU in this one, but some of our fears that we had in the preview uh, played out and FSU was unable to come away with the victory. Let's go ahead and do the breakdown. If you're new to the Instant Reaction Podcast, this is a, a quickie pod where I just give my thoughts right after watching it. I obviously have not had time uh, to go and review the game again, which I will do uh, either tomorrow or Monday, and then Monday evening, Ingram and I will reconvene and we will uh, discuss the game more thoroughly after we talk to our sources, after we've had a chance to watch it, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get into this. A couple stats I, I want to go over and some things that I saw. Um, ultimately, FSU outgained uh, by, what, 143 yards in this one? That equates to about a 10-point loss. Now, that's what they lost the game by. Um couple things. Number one, uh, Clemson did not quit. I know that Ingram and I were thinking, hey, like maybe if they get down early, they could quit. FSU goes down and, and, and scores a touchdown to go up six to three. Could have been seven to three, but they missed the extra point. And ultimately, uh, Clemson does not quit. They keep battling uh, and they go to halftime with a 20 to 13 lead. Uh, they did feed the ball to Will Shipley, you know, like we discussed in, in the show. Uh, the preview episode and and I mean look guys Clemson is down but but Clemson is clearly a better team than FSU FSU was fairly lucky to have a chance to win this game in the fourth quarter uh, given that they only scored two times on offense and Clemson missed three field goals uh, this this is probably more I don't know 34 17. If they play this ball game again, but but FSU did have a chance to win it. They hung in there. They fought. There was some creative play calling. There was some higher quality uh, defensive coaching, I thought, and defensive effort in the second half of this one. And yet, it it still wasn't enough. Uh, just a, a a tough ball game there for FSU. Let's get in quickly here to how Clemson went ahead and did that. All right, so. Well, I, okay. I also have my notes here that I called the correct score, 30 to 20. It happens. Although I don't think I've ever actually done that in a decade of doing the Noel cast. Maybe I have. If I if you guys remember, let me know. But I, I don't I don't actually think that I have. Anyway, uh let's go ahead and talk about FSU's offense first. And this game really exposed some things with FSU's offense that I think we thought were there, that we feared were there, that we hoped uh were getting a little bit better. Clemson has the number three defense in the country per SP+. Plus. That is the best defense FSU will see all year. FSU got its butt kicked up front today. Physically, they could not block Clemson. Also, FSU's receivers got pretty much dominated by Clemson's defensive backs, right? Good, good Rich and, and the other kid at corner, they didn't give up very much, ultimately. they Clemson was fine with letting those guys win battles on, 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 on the edge, and they did. And ultimately, you only have so many one-on-ones that you can lose. Clemson clearly came into this game with the plan of stopping the run and not allowing the explosive run, uh, and it did that. It absolutely dominated FSU's run game. FSU had a rushing success rate of 25% in this game. Jay Sean Corbin, 11% success rate. Ward, 20% success rate. Jordan Travis, 30% success rate. And they also did not create explosive runs at all. The longest run of the day was Sean Corbin's 24-yard run. Other than that, let me go ahead and pull up the big play sector here. He had one for 12, one for 11. Clemson basically said, hey, we don't think your pass game is worth the damn, and we're going to go ahead and shut you down and not allow you to run the football effectively, consistently, or explosively. And you know what? 
Clemson was correct. Your passing game was not good enough, ultimately, to win this ball game. You had the awesome play, 75-yard touchdown, Mike Norvell and Kenny Dillingham pulling out all the stops. That was great. Lawrence Toa Philly, awesome job. Staying on his feet, scoring that ball. That was that was pretty exciting to see, man. But, you know, other than that, 21 throws for, what, 100, I think? Is that right? Make sure I'm, I'll, I'm going to check another source on this. Just so I don't say something here that I, that I, that I can't say. Uh, I mean, 75 yards, the other, other 20-ish throws were like for, for, you know, just low, low hundreds. That's tough. That's, that's not really one that that's, that's going to get it done. Now your success rate passing was actually okay, right? 44%. Not, not terrible there. Uh, but if you pair that 44% passing with a 25% rushing success rate, that's not going to work too often. And if you pair the lack of explosive pass plays other than the one big one, uh, that's not going to work very well either. You only had one pass play over 25 yards in this game. Clemson pretty much bottled you up. The offense did not play a game that allowed it to win. Uh, and yet FSU still kind of had a chance to win this game due to some of the things that I think due to, honestly, a really nice job of coaching in this one to keep them in this game and to keep them close enough. And also some some key Clemson mistakes. But the, the one thing I want you to take home tonight, right, is this. Clemson had a stop rate on defense. So that's drives it in and punts, turnovers, or turnover on downs. So not missed field goals. Clemson had a defensive stop rate of 79%. That is just that's super dominant. That would be second in the nation if that if they did that for an entire season. I mean, if if four out of your five drives are ending in punts, turnovers, or turnovers on downs, it's not going to get it done. You're not going to win the game. That, that's just not that is not sustainable. And most of it does, I think, come back to Jordan Travis is a developing passer. FSU does not have very much talent at receiver right now, and they're not able to move Clemson off the ball in the run game. So they're having to try to trick people. And Clemson has a whole lot of talent on defense, and they have a great defensive coaching staff, and they just weren't tricked all that often. In in baseball terms, some of that stuff, when, when you're trying to throw some of those junk balls, some of those teams swing at it. Clemson just spits on it. I said, all right. Throw me something in the strike zone. See what we can do with it. And uh, when FSU did, Clemson generally hit it out of the park. I I thought the game plan was was solid. They just got beat physically. They, they, they can't hang with a defense like that right now. Okay, so anyway, but yeah, that toe Philly play was that was that was pretty damn fun. Uh, yards per play in the ball game, though. I'm using stat broadcast right here. So 244. So they had 4.4 yards of play overall. If you take away the one play by Toa Philly, they had 169 on 55. That's 3.0. 3.07. So 3.1. That's just not going to get it done. All right, let's talk defense a little bit. Uh, I got a lot of heat this week for saying FSU was the second worst defense that Clemson had faced among the Power 5 opponents that it had played. Um, uh, and I still feel that way. I think FSU's defense is probably better than the defense of Boston College, although I will note that BC went on the road today, and uh, I mean, points are not not a perfect comparison, but FSU went on the road at Syracuse and held them to 21, and FSU gave up, what, 30? Now, BC, of course, only scored six points, and they have some pretty major issues right now on offense, including with the quarterback. We'll see if they get that fixed. By the time FSU rolls up to Chestnut Hill, but I want to point this out, right? Um, that game against Boston College is going to be a game FSU's defense needs to go up there and dominate. And in my mind, FSU's defense has one good game this year. I don't buy into the stuff, the idea that they were much better against Wake in the second half. I think Wake was kind of packed in. I don't really buy into the idea they that they were much better against Louisville in the second half. Again, not technically garbage time, but. 
I think you saw a real change in play calling and intent there from Louisville. They have one good game to me. And part of that is, yes, because UNC dropped some passes and had some bad throws when guys were turned loose in the secondary. But this was Clemson's best day on offense so far this year. FSU's stop rate in this game was only 34%, guys. That's terrible. If that was a stop, if that was a team, right? If that was a stop rate as a team for the entire year, it would be dead last in the nation. FSU only ended 30, basically a third of Clemson's drives in punts, turnovers, or turnovers on down. I mean, Clemson missing field goals or even deciding to kick those field goals is not really on the defense. Now, you can say, yes, FSU buckled up in the red zone and they forced some field goals, and I think there is merit to that. I think there is value in forcing teams uh, to kick field goals, or perhaps if you don't buy in the deal, you can force the field goal. You can at least force a situation where the field goal is uh, more likely to be called or or even prudent. But I mean, stop rate of 34% against this Clemson offense, that's really bad. That's, that's just not good enough. They rode Will Shipley. I thought Will Shipley had a nice game. FSU, I think, knew they were going to ride Will Shipley quite a bit, especially with, with, with Kobe Pryor, Kobe Pace. Uh, I'm trying to remember what his old name, his new name was. I think his I think his new name is Pace, but his old name is Pryor. 25 carries for a buck 28 for Shipley. Uh, four more catches on six targets for 24. You know, not bad. He he really didn't he really didn't kill FSU. He had a 40% success rate, which is better than that's twice Trayshawn Ward and about 4x what, what Corbin had. That's not a, a dominant effort rushing the football, 40% uh success rate. Okay. 128, two touchdowns. Touchdowns are awesome, obviously. He was a finisher for them. Uh, when, when they targeted him, though, uh, six targets, only one of those targets was successful. So he didn't really actually kill FSU all that much through the air. Four catches, but a lot of those were, were unsuccessful plays. They were they were dumps and uh, did not get Clemson back into a position where it could score or, or pick up a first down. Uh, where Clemson really did a nice job tonight, though, was throwing the ball to its receivers. Justin Ross, eight targets, six catches, 62% success rate. Joseph Nagata, three targets, three catches, 100% success rate. Bo Collins, one for one, 100% success rate, also drew a penalty where uh, I believe that was the one with Knowles where, where Knowles just doesn't turn around for the ball because he's out of position. Like, he's not just choosing not to turn around. He's out of position playing makeup coverage and, uh, and, and ends up running into Collins who draws the penalty. I think their tight ends had what uh, like a seventy five percent success rate. Now, when they threw the ball, now Joe Joe only one target, no success right there. Clemson threw the ball to its backs a lot tonight. Eight targets, one of those plays graded as successful. Those were were sort of wasted plays. DJ success rate targeting receivers tonight was excellent and. You know, the Adam Fuller is a guy that coaches the secondary, right? I, I would say this was a, a bad game by, by his defense, ultimately. You know, I mean, they, they free missed field goals. Clemson scored one on, on, on defense. You can say the defense only gave up 23 points, but uh, Fuller's defense also does not control, you know, when, when Clemson misses field goals or, or makes field goals. Now, they did score on defense. I thought that was great. And certainly, I think you felt good emotionally about the defense for the most part when watching the game. But you got to keep in mind, Clemson's offense has been not the typical Clemson offense. They're wearing those jerseys, but they have had struggles this year. They're not terrible. Uh, I think they've played a really, really tough schedule of defenses. If you saw uh, Georgia today and damn near shut Florida out, in the swamp and and bunch of their defense comes in his face looked pretty damn good for the most part. Although pick out lit up by Miami. So we'll talk about that later on in the week. Jermaine Johnson, Fabian Lovett made some serious money up front. I just think you need to see better coordination on the back end. 
and also, in fairness, Clemson did have some some receivers who made some really nice one on one plays, and, and we were a little bit not fearful, but hey, in the back of your mind, Clemson still has really good athletes at receiver as far as going up catching the ball. Maybe they don't have that that slot they can trust, that guy who's quicker than fast. Uh, but I mean, thirty four percent stop rate. That's trash. Can't do that. That's that's not going to work. Uh, I I don't I don't think you want to give this defensive staff credit for Dabo Swinney deciding to kick long field goals instead of going for it. Like he probably should on fourth down. So, um, anyway, interesting there. Let's see, I will give a couple of other really nice nice credits to the defense. Right, eleven tackles for loss. Pretty good. That's that's pretty damn good. Clemson had one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Um, anyway, 11 tackles for loss is really, really nice. Three sacks. Clemson, though, had six sacks. Fourth down, 4-13 for FSU. 4-14 for Clemson. Um, I mean, just a little more two-dimensional offense for Clemson in, in, in this one. And, yeah, just uh, just not great there. Not great enough there for, for the Knolls. Um, so, certainly tough. And no, uh, no, did I get that right? Yeah, no, no offensive points for FSU in the second half of this game. That's tough. Although Clemson only had what one offensive touchdown in the second half there. All right, y'all, I'll catch you next time on NoCast, which we will record typically Monday night, maybe Monday morning if I get done with the review early, and we will see y'all. Later, be sure to drop your questions there, patreon.com slash Nolcast. Follow me on Twitter at BudElliot3. Follow us on Twitter at Nolcast. And still a lot of potentially winnable games for FSU this year. Anxiously looking forward to seeing how Boston College looks tonight against Louisville. We just saw Miami go up there and beat Pitt. And we just saw Florida uh, get thrashed by Georgia, but not a whole lot to be taken away from that, I would guess, unless Florida just up and quits. So Clemson certainly didn't quit. And... Better team won tonight, but there's some good things we can take away from this. I will see y'all.